talk a little bit about the use of color. Um, I really think you should limit the number of colors you use in a particular painting. Maybe to three or five, you can use those colors and mix everything under the sun from those. Again, that kind of goes back to that primary color thing. And I wanted to show you some examples of some things I'm either working on or have already done. This is um, irises, and I love irises. The first time I painted one, I thought I was going to pull my hair out. But like everything, you really need to understand the structure of the object itself, the subject itself. And I use technology um, in this respect. I take digital photographs an awful lot, put them on the computer. There's a lot of uh, photo editing software that you can use. Um, some are free and downloadable. Others are very expensive. And I like to use the pared down version of a very expensive one. Um, I pull them up and I use a lot of those features. You really just play with it. People are afraid to use the software for the most part because they think they're going to lose their image or break it or whatever. But the first thing they need to learn, learn is the undo button. In doing this painting, um, I used a few colors. I used Windsor Blue Red Shade, which we used before. I used Permanent Rose. And those two, uh, anytime you start a painting, Make a little color chart. There's the Windsor Blue Red Shade. Here's Permanent Rose. And here is one of the purples that's a result of these two colors. So you play with these and then you mix them together. You also see what they do layered or gently mixed together and all the combinations in between. So you know when you start to paint this, if you want something that's a little rosier, for example, you mix a little more of the pink in there with it. If it wants to be more violet, then you need more of the blue, so you can come up to these colors. And it's fascinating to see what these do with each other. Um, they make great purples, the same blue. And then again, as we did before, the yellow, that's <laughs> dirty brush gives you that color. And then the Windsor Blue, red shade again. Gives us our greens and lots of combinations from very dark. Real spring green. And if you want to take these greens, if you can't get them dark enough to suit you, you go to the complementary color. And in this case, it's a red, so you add that to this green mixture and it gives you a nice rich dark without changing that combination. So I use this and this and then these, this yellow, so that's three. And then in here a little bit of uh, raw sienna and a little bit of burnt sienna. So by limiting these colors you really get a more cohesive appearance. Sometimes you see beginning painters who use um, a lot of tube greens straight out of the tube and they have a landscape with 27 different greens in there and for some reason they're kind of fighting each other. Um, it's my opinion that you start with a base color and you add to that. So you might start with this combination of colors. To get it much darker you'd add a little red to it or even a little burnt sienna uh, which is kind of a red and yellow combination. Um, you can go lighter, add a little bit of yellow to it. You'll get a huge range of colors. So by playing on this sketchbook that you're keeping off to the side you really can understand that. You can explore a little bit better. Even these colors come from the new gamboge that we used and the permanent rose. This has been one of my best sellers um, and I think the reason for that is the choice of colors. You can't really screw around too much with Mother Nature. She's got it perfected but in this case, the reds and the greens are complementary colors. And if you start to really look, you'll, you'll notice the use of complementary colors uh, everywhere. A lot of signage is that, um, advertisements, just about everywhere in the world. And food, uh, food combinations of colors are all complementary colors. What that means to you is colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. Easy way to remember it is red and green is Christmas purple and yellow or Easter and then the other combination going from primary colors again blue and orange 
So if you have a pale blue that just won't get any darker, like cerulean blue, the addition of a little bit of orange will deepen that blue. It will stay blue, not change its, its range, and you'll end up with a nice deep shade of that same color that you can't get otherwise. Some colors will go all the way from values of, of 1 to 10, and then some just won't get any darker than maybe a 4 or a 5. So with those colors, you need to add the complementary color to get to that point. Um, each year I take a group to Italy, and I love to paint the Italian scenes. For architecture, it's wonderful because the buildings are always just a little skewed anyway, and they're a little crooked, so you don't have to have everything perfect. Almost as good as painting flowers. Um, I, I love the country and its people, and they're all exciting, and they have such great passion for everything they do. These two are just part of a series I have done on, on Portofino, which is a, a little boutique harbor in the Italian Riviera. Um, small, very pricey, but absolutely gorgeous. You should go there. Or you should come with me. I go once a year. <laughs> Um, another example of a limited palette, I did these birds, uh, drew them in, which took a while, and masked out a lot of the white, and then I did about five different layers of background. This was actually painted, the original was painted on a, about a full sheet, so it was a good size painting. The masking fluid protected these whites, and then um, after that dried, the background dried, I removed the masking fluid, and then I was free to come in here and paint the birds. There's actually not quite as much uh, painting in here as you would think. It's the shadows cast by these white feathers that make this work. So blue with a little touch of a, a paint's gray to dull it down for the background. Same colors for the shadows. And then those same colors added to the colors I used here, the yellows and the burnt sienna. So, a limited palette can give you a beautiful effect. I think it's a very soft painting, um, good sharp detail, and shadows quite dark. Um, you wouldn't think the white bird having that dark color, or even up here, or as dull as it is right there. Uh, difficult for you to see through here, I'm sure. But, as, like I say fairly often, um, you have to put in some ugly to make the beautiful stand out. And I always, at first, started to paint and I thought every color had to be perfect. It had to be beautiful and everything had to be the same brightness. And, and it took quite a while to realize that, uh, no, that you have to have the ugly colors, the dull colors, the, the um, neutrals to make the bright colors stand out. So here's the most neutral color next to the brightest color and then the darkest color is also in that one little area. It pulls your eye right there and it makes you stop and study for a while. So it's what gives it that pizzazz. So it's, it's the use of color, but the values with those colors that really make your paintings work. So that being said, go paint.